Hey, tubers of the U. All right, this is a schematic of the uh, actual working circuit that I'm going to show here in a minute. I want, wanted to show you the schematic first. And it, it just consists of three capacitors, two diodes, a coil, a MOSFET, and three resistors, a 1 MHz 555 timer chip. And uh, this is the actual part number. I got it from uh, digikey.com. And uh, the frequency of this entire circuit is 145.758 kilohertz. Um, it's pretty important that the C1 capacitor is a film capacitor and that it's a very low value. So I have this one at 0 0.01 microfarads or uh, about 10,000 picofarads and it's a film capacitor. C2 and C3 are not that important. It uh, just so happens that the C2 is a tantalum capacitor down here. Uh, and the C3 over here is a, uh, an electroelectric capacitor and it's not important either really that what value that is. It just I just have a 10,000 microfarad uh, capacitor right there. Um, and the load resistor right here, R5, is the load, is 10,000 ohms of resistance. This is the smallest of resistance I've been able to find to be able, be able to pull uh, the current out of the micro range and into the milli range. Um, and this is very helpful in that we don't have to account anymore for a tiny little uh, current leakage coming out of our capacitor or uh, the meter eating up a tiny little bit of micro amp of current when we're measuring our uh, voltage across our load because now we can get about 1.23 milliamps of current running through this entire thing um let's see what else here uh the coil is a uh, not arbitrary I mean, it is arbitrary. It, it doesn't seem to really matter, but I just happen to have a bifiler coil on there uh, right here. And it's the, I don't show it in the schematic, but there's actually two wires wound together with the opposite ends connected. So it's just basically connected in series to make one long wire. And so we'll show that here in a minute. Uh, let's follow the current around. Uh, if we this battery right here is just powering our switching circuitry and that is all we're not concerned with the power coming out of this battery and, and going and feeding feeding our uh, uh, timing switchery here we're not we don't care about that the power that we're looking at is from this power source over here okay and uh, so let's let's look at that from the negative side. So starting from the negative side here, flows through our meter, through our switch, which is a MOSFET, and uh, through our parallel circuit here and through here, which is our capacitor and resistor, combines back together again, and then goes heads towards the positive through the coil, and then back to our positive. And that is it. That's all that it's doing. Uh, I only have one meter reading input and output current at the same time because look it's in the same path That's the same path Okay um, uh, The capacitor now basically blocks the DC current so the power supply is not going to be flowing through the capacitor anymore once it's charged because it's just going to block it so the main current is going through the meter switch and the resistor okay and I do believe even though there's no diode on to rectify a collapsing magnetic field I believe the energy in the coil is uh, collapsing and uh, most likely charging the capacitor up to a higher value than our input voltage and so the resistor draws off that extra energy stored in the capacitor I believe the the load here R5 the load resistor is drawing current both from the capacitor and from the battery 
at the same time. And so what I believe is happening is that as the load draws current, let's say from the negative side of the capacitor, the capacitor drains a little bit. And so because of that, the battery then has to replenish the exact same amount of energy that the resistor took into charging the capacitor. Um, but because the voltage is higher than the voltage of the battery, then I don't think it is possible that the battery can actually charge anything more in the capacitor. So it is believed that the load resistor is simply just drawing all the energy off the capacitor only. But not only that, but the voltage across our capacitor is what's powering our load directly across it because it's in parallel so of course the voltage is going to be the same across both and so that voltage is higher on the output than it is on the input and because the currents are exactly the same coming out of the input and going into the, the load then this makes this over 100 percent efficient uh, when it shouldn't be this should be just a 100 percent efficient circuit but it's not uh if the load let's say the load was uh eating up half of the energy from the power source uh, okay let's say uh that was 50 percent and the other 50 percent was stored in the magnetic field of the coil okay and uh during the shutoff time during its frequency frequency the magnetic field collapses and let's say gives back that 50% energy into the load, then the load should just have 100%. But this isn't the case. We're seeing just a little bit more than 100% and it doesn't make sense. Uh, Ohm's law lines up great with the me what the meters say. Uh, so uh, this, this is, this is 10,000 ohms. And if we go look at that right quick on a calculator, if we take our uh, 12 volts and we divide it by 10,000 ohms from our load resistor, we should have about a, uh, 1.2 milliamps flowing through our uh, meter here. And the meter shows exactly that. So this correlates very well with what Ohm's law uh, calculates out as. It's the same thing. So this this output really is receiving, uh, according to the meter, that voltage. And not only that, the capacitor is storing that voltage too, which uh, filters out and smooths out that voltage so we can see the real value across our load. And it is higher with the same input and output current running through it right here. Uh, let's see, what else here? I think that's about it for right now. We can move on to the, uh, yeah, we can move on to the actual circuit and take a look at that. And what we'll do with that is we'll show the current going, we'll bypass the switch, take the switch out and we'll just show the negative going directly through the resistor and the coil and we'll see that using Ohm's law as a calculation that it's it does the same thing but the voltage is lower the voltage is actually slightly lower than 12 volts and so it's an under unity circuit so let's let's go right now to that uh, so we can see what's going on with that okay so here's the circuit and as you can see uh, we got 12.12 .12 volts on our power supply right here and it's switching through this and going through our meter at 1.23 milliamps of current that current is the same exact thing going into our load right here so again there's no sense in having two meters uh, but we've got it up into the milliamp range so this is good we don't have to worry about microamps uh, at 12.22 volts 
Now, uh, inevitably, there will be, I'm sure, uh, any good electronic experts out there will understand that there is MOSFET leakage in our MOSFET here, where our black probe is uh, stuck in, as you can see right there. Uh, there is MOSFET leakage in this, and I believe in the last video I showed this by uh, taking this wire over here and not bypassing the positive to take the power supply out and putting it right back on the negative to form, form a loop right through our MOSFET and saw that uh, the wattage is considerably smaller than our input and output wattages and the difference between the two. So this is not the reason as to what we are seeing right here. But uh, I have it set up to where all I have to do is take this yellow wire off connected to the capacitor and take the capacitor out to show you that it's basically the same exact current uh, but our voltage drops and becomes an under unity circuit which is a uh, follows our conservation laws so let's do that just take it off uh, right here oh. And as you can see, it's the exact same current. And the voltage is uh, still higher for some reason. I think it's because of the coil. So the, the voltage is the same with or without the capacitor. So you see the capacitor isn't even needed. So let's put that back. All right. and. So we're back to right where we were before. Now, now let's bypass our switch and directly connect our power source to our load. So let's do that. Now we're just connecting it directly to the negative. And as you can see, here, let's get that stuck on there really well okay and as you can see it's the exact same current because now we're directly connecting the negative of our power supply uh, directly to through our meter right here where those two black wires meet and the black probe and then it comes out the red and goes directly through our load and but look at our voltage you see it is now lower than our uh, input voltage or almost the same so this this calculates as an under unity under unity uh, efficiency now <clears throat> let's put that back and while I put that back look at the voltage As you can see, it's climbing up above our input voltage of 12.12. .12. Meanwhile, our input current is exactly the same going coming from our power source and into our load. Uh, so let's calculate that right fast. So we have 12.12. .12 times point zero zero one two three and that's how many milliwatts is coming out of the input while our output is 12.22 times the same current one two three makes it as easy as that and that's our output wattage so let's divide that by our input wattage and as you can see we have a cop greater than one so it's getting more than one times the amount of energy out than what's going in so we can multiply that by 100% and you see it's 100.8 percent so we can round that up to 101 percent and that's where we get our 101 percent efficiency from now 
I'd like to uh, make a quick um, explanation of the difference between a cop and efficiency. Now, I'm sure the circuit itself is uh, under 100% efficiency, okay, because all circuits are going to be that because of all the losses and everything in the system and resistance and so forth. So, a COP, which is the coefficiency of performance, is any kind of extra energy from outside of the system that is being pulled into the system. And so the COP here is greater than one. And so, uh, it's just like a solar panel. A solar panel is a is a free energy device, okay? But the conversion efficiency from the uh, from the light, uh, the electromagnetism in the light hitting the silicon in the solar cells is only like right around between probably like 10 and 15 percent. So that conversion efficiency is very poor and very low. But the COP is greater than one, and we don't have to input any power into it to get power out of it. Same thing for a wind generator or a, a heat pump. A heat pump has a is over unit T uh, or has a cop greater than one because actually you can have a cop between three and four or so and can put out three to four times more energy than what you put into it because it's pulling in heat from the environment, environmental heat. So uh, so this thing right here is pulling in electromagnetism from somewhere. I'm not entirely sure where yet, but uh, I don't believe it's it's in the radio frequency range. But uh, I was looking here on the internet and looking at all the different frequencies for a radio frequency list. And the AM radio is between 535 kilohertz to 1.7 megahertz. And the shortwave and CB and television FM radio is all in the megahertz range. So this is this is only 145 kilohertz range. So I'm not sure of any frequencies that are that low. But that's what this circuit is running at. So. Uh, I think I covered everything. Uh, there's MOSFET leakage, of course, but that can't account for uh, the difference between our input and output uh, watts. Um, I explained a little bit the difference between the coefficiency of performance, which is extra inter inter environmental energy uh, from outside of the system being drawn into the system. And uh, we showed the direct connection from the power source to the load and uh, it's still uh, the the efficiency drop below unity because we weren't pulsing it uh, let me show you the AC real fast there is no AC so there's the AC range there's nothing there here's the AC range over here there's nothing there because this is all DC, pulse to DC. We're pulsing our DC power from our battery here through our switch and into our load at 145 kilohertz. So that's about it for right now. Um, please like and share. Uh, I would love for you to share these results with others. Let's try to get others to replicate this and collaborate on this. Uh, those with oscilloscopes, by all means, uh, measure this as well um, I'm sure that these meters are very accurate uh, especially when it correlates exactly pretty much with the uh, Ohm's law uh, in fact let's do that right quick I, I think I already did that but let's make sure we got 12.22 volts divided by our 10,000 ohms of resistance on our load right there uh, and that is 1.22 milliamps of current, which is not exactly, but it's pretty much exactly what we just calculated using the Ohm's law. So, so uh, I don't see, and you get the same thing with the direct connection 
from our power source to our load. Uh, we get the exact same calculations using Ohm's law and the meter. So if you can, uh, I got the parts list. Uh, I got the schematic uh, shown previously at the beginning of the video. I will also, I made some newer and better ones uh, down below. Here's the, uh, the links are down below to those schematics. You can download them and uh, build this breadboard circuit and uh, <clears throat> measure everything in it and you'll see you should get the exact same uh, results. Um, so, uh, comments are welcome on uh, what you think the source of this energy actually is. And um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe by hitting that button right there. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Have a good one.